And we are live. JT here. Welcome to the huddle. The huddle is where I sit down with successful people from the world of sport and coaching. It's to learn more about their journey to greatness. Why do I have these conversations? Because success always leaves clues. I want to take a moment to thank you. I want to thank you, whether you are tuning in live as we stream into our Facebook community, whether you are watching the replay on YouTube or on Facebook, whether you're listening to the audio on the podcast. Thank you so much for being here with me and my special guest today. And here's my friendly reminder to you. The mind is like a parachute. It works best when it's wide open. My challenge to you is to go all in on this conversation, remove any distractions, and get laser focus on our conversation today. And my guarantee to you is you'll gain a valuable nugget that will not only help you succeed in sport, but more importantly, in the game of life. I've been looking forward to my conversation with my special guest today. Uh, we've had so many great conversation just offline and you know we when we first met I knew there was something about him that like just drew me in that connected so I, I felt you know that we needed to have a, a conversation on the huddle. Uh, my guest in the huddle today is a Carlton Ravens alum. Uh, he is currently serving as the events coordinator with Football Canada. My guest in the huddle today is Ryan Kublek. How are you today brother? Uh, thanks, JT. Appreciate uh, having the opportunity to speak with you. And I, I agree. We've had so many conversations. And as coaches and entrepreneurs, it's one of those things that we re record all of them all the time. I'm sure we would solve all the world's problems or <laughs> think we can at least. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it's yeah. It, it's funny, right? It's that law of vibration, right? You, you always attract like minded people, right? And it's a great reminder on that one. Uh, so before we get kicked off, pun intended, I just want to thank you. Uh, one of my daily rituals is to count my blessings. And I'm a firm believer that one of the biggest blessings you can give anyone is your time and energy. So I just want to thank you for blessing me and our community with some of your time and energy today, brother, and, and just really enthused for our conversation today. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Okay. Uh, so one of the things that I like to remind myself and others is that life is a game and games are supposed to be fun. So I'm curious from your experience, um, what is something fun that you like to do? Let's say you have, I have a magic wand here. I'm like, Brian, you can have, you know, time, money, uh, you know, resources are not, you know, a factor what would you do with an extra hour of freedom? Wow, that's, uh, that's a question uh, that poses quite, uh, quite close to my everyday because I wish I had an extra hour uh, quite often. Uh, I'm trying to think, you know, I, I, think, uh, I think if I had an extra hour, I would spend a little bit more time just able to sit down and, and and watch football with other people, to be honest. I think that's the one thing that right now, not coaching that I miss the most. And one thing mm -hmm. that we take for granted so often as coaches, or, you know, we have this opportunity to have an influence and be next to these, these players or these other athletes and watch film with them. And sometimes we get in this bubble and, you know, looking back at my time coaching, I found myself in that bubble so much watching film on my own and not sharing that knowledge or learning from them. And, you know, mm -hmm. if I had an hour a day, or an hour every single week where I could sit down and have that opportunity to just work with anyone and watch film, 100% mm -hmm. I would take, take right away. Mm -hmm. It's interesting how, you know, those, those are what I really heard from you, so simple connections, right, where you're, you're connecting with someone over a mutual interest, passion, it, it really is a great connector to the game of life. 100%. And that, I mean, those conversations are never just football. They're how do you describe this to reflect and you know, resonate to that person? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So 
you know, the interesting thing about your journey, again, we've had lots of great conversations, right? Our, our mutual connection at first was football. And then I feel that as we've gotten to know each other, you know, we've talked about, you know, the game of life. We've talked about business. We've talked about entrepreneurship, all these different facets, right, um, of life. So I'm curious, you know, sport has obviously played an important role for you in your life. I mean, you're still involved today. You were first a, a, a high quality athlete, you know, coach and now you're transitioning you know into this administrative leadership role at, at a national level uh, i'm curious what is the one lesson that sport has taught you that you still find yourself applying to your life today i mean i, I think the biggest thing for me as always and we talked about this earlier is just just perseverance and, and just continue to work towards it you know, I, I was probably one of the, the smallest guys in the locker room, whether that was high school or university. And, uh, you know, my mindset always was, you know, try to take on the best and be the best. And even if you couldn't achieve to the same athletic ability, the mindset still had to be there. And that to me has been able to carry forward into my business and into now working with Football Canada and just trying to give my all and do everything I can for the people around me. Right. Everyone, you know, within a team, within a team setting has their own sort of role and you find your role and what you're good at over time. And mm -hmm. for me, being my best was being there to support everyone as well. Right. And, you know, we, I love the word glue guy. And there's something that, you know, I always strive to sort of be and, and represent as is like if, you know, someone needed me, be there for them. Mm -hmm. um, and if someone didn't need me, give them the space. Right. Read the room, read what people need. Mm -hmm. You know, I love that. And why I love is I heard two things from you on that. One, you know, it's so easy in our world where, you know, it's easy to live in this 3D world, right? Where we, we, we measure stuff based on what we hear, see, smell, taste, and touch, right? And you talked about it. You know, there's some things you're not able to change, right? Like your height, if we're talking from a sports lens, right? Your height, you know, weight, okay. I mean, that, that maybe can change a little bit, but there are certain things. And it's funny that sport is a world where those quote unquote metrics, you know, sometimes get you in the door or maybe make it a little bit harder. But what I really heard from you there is, you know, is to focus on the things you can control, right? Like you talked about your persistence, your perseverance, your ability to, to really go that proverbial extra yard, right? To, as I often say, plus one. So I'm curious, how, how has that lesson shown up for you in your life? Um, as I mentioned, you, you've had many different paths, you know, first as a high level uh, athlete, coach, you know, entrepreneurship, now at this national, uh, now working for a national sports organization. How's that role, how has it been able to control on the controllables? How's that impacted? Oh, I mean, I, I think the challenges you face as an athlete and then the challenges transferring into, you know, being a coach and then as an entrepreneur has sort of set me up in a position now where the uncontrollable happens and you don't become very phased by it. I'm lucky enough to be surrounded by so many good mentors and so many good people all the time because of the sport world being filled with great people that you sort of take these bits and pieces of how they handle stressful times, how they handle situations and you build your own path to handle them yourself. I think that one of the greatest things that I got from, you know, one of my coaches at Carleton, one of my, one of my mentors with junior Ravens was, uh, you know, Josh Kobe had E plus R equals O on his wall. Right. And I, I know you've read it. I know you've seen it. The, you know, uh, event plus response equals outcome. And we really mm -hmm. focused on response a lot. And like, you know, from basically 22 to 24 for me, we were in that room together all the time. And I was able to see that every single day. And I've carried that forward into my business and working with my guys and my employees and now mm -hmm. carry it forward and everything that I'm doing with Football Canada because when you're running events, things do go awry and things happen. And, you know, the only controllable part to that for you is how you're going to respond to it and try to figure out your solution. Mm. I love that, right? And I love the idea of like what you talked about. I I'm a big word guy. You know, it's so easy to become reactive, right? When things don't go as planned. And, and I feel like that's something that, you know, playing sport at a high level, coaching at a high level teaches you that, right? To sort of embrace that, you know, not that we expect, you know, things to go, you know, awry or crazy, but we just understand it is going to happen from time to time. So I love your ability, like, to respond, right? And you talked about that. Uh, so let me ask you, I'm curious on this one, do you think the ability to respond and come from a place of intentional action and focus action, do you think that that is a skill that can be taught or is that just some people have it some people don't no absolutely i think it's once again relation a relation and correlation to your surroundings 
right? And surround yourself with the people that act in such way and respond to things in a certain way. You know, if you're constantly around people that are reactive to things and they don't have an opportunity to think it through, well, you're going to become a little bit more reactive. Surround yourself with those people. It helps. It doesn't mean that you can't surround yourself and then influence someone else that maybe is more reactive, Mm -hmm. but, you know, having that, you know, peace in the back of your mind, that conscious understanding, that compassion and everything you do and understanding that no one is perfect around you Mm -hmm. gives you the ability to truly think things through and then maybe, you know, have a truer response or truer to your self response to things going wrong. Mm. You know, and what I really heard from you is the power of, you know, stopping and thinking. And it reminds me that, you know, the one thing that we're given is free will, right? The power to choose our next thought. So, so I love that it just simply comes back to, Hey, you're not going to get it right. A hundred percent of the time, right? That's that illusion of perfection. But whatever's happened up to this point, I can choose my next thought. I can choose how I want to respond moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I'm curious, you know, you've had these different pathways, right? Uh, since you were done your, your athletic playing career, you know, f- first it was coaching the, and entrepreneurship. And now, you know, from an event planning, event delivery, what, what inspired you to, you know, take on these new adventures and, and choose these uh, different pathways? Oof. Um, you know, I think uh, entrepreneurship has sort of sat close to me for a long time. I was pretty obsessed with Dragon's Den growing up and seeing people sort of <laughs> have an idea and accomplish it. And it wasn't necessarily the success of it, but I love seeing the end story when they showed it of, hey, you know what, they went in, they asked for this, they got that, and this is where they're at now. Right. And that to me, I, you know, I tried to apply as a coach, but while I was coaching, you know, I had the opportunity to meet some great people in the community that own businesses and an opportunity came to me where someone was trying to sell a business and they asked if I knew anyone. And, you know, I'm, you know, my, my stepfather is a bit of an entrepreneur himself has business coach as well. And I was able to sort of speak with him and he's like, you know, this is a good opportunity for you. You understand the business. Like, why don't you do it? So he sort of supported me in that. And I said, all right, like, I'm going to buy the business. I'm going to see what happens. And I sort of just took the chance and I, uh, I took out a loan. I bought the business and, you know, my mindset then was I'm going to pay this loan off right away. So mm-hmm. it sort of changed my mindset and everything of, Hey, you know what? I, I owe someone, 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 something right now. I need to do mm-hmm. everything I can to pay that back and then I'll be happy. But what it did was create this massive drive in me to just keep growing and keep getting better and keep being better at it and more efficient. Cause once I hit that target, it was, wow, I'm able to do this. I paid that off in this amount of time. I can mm-hmm. keep going. I can keep growing right now in running the business. And we, we talked about this back in, I think it was January in Kingston. You know, I was, I was feeling the world of no football, not coaching and uh, running the business was phenomenal, but I still had that missing piece in me. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I was just like, I, there was something not right at the end of the day. And it was that coaching, that football piece, that, that taste I wasn't getting. And uh, out of the blue, I had the opportunity, obviously, to, to take a role with Football Canada. And, uh, you know, when you get an opportunity to work at the NSO level, it's something you would never turn up. And, you know, very, very grateful for it and working with other people as part of a team. You know, the, the challenge mm-hmm. of being an entrepreneur is you're on your own and you make your own decisions. And, yeah, you have people that work for you and with you every single day. But at the end of the day, you're the one solely responsible. So you lose that opportunity to collaborate on things. You know, mm-hmm. being a team player as an athlete and then as a coach and an entrepreneur, you lose it a little bit. So going back yeah. to football at the NSO was great because I'm surrounded by a phenomenal team that challenges me now every single day. And it's making mm-hmm. me a better business owner and obviously a better event planner. I think football coach at the same time. Mm-hmm. You know, what I love about what you shared is, you know, this idea that your path like can deviate in life, right? It's like we get so fixated that it can only look this way. And I think that that's what, at least from my lived experience, kept me stuck for for a few years, right? And so I just love your ability to like embrace new adventure. I love how you also sort of talked about this idea of, you know, I feel like sometimes we're we're programmed and, and sort of, conditioned to believe that life is like a zero sum game, right? There's a winner and a loser. And, and, you know, it's interesting. I I do think sport to a degree, if left unchecked, it it can reinforce that. But I love how you said, like, it's just, you know, I was on this path of coaching and then something was, I felt like something was missing. 
And then I find found, you know, there's this opportunity at Football Canada. So I can still, you know, be an entrepreneur. I can still, you know, be a, a servant leader in football, um, but I just need to be open to how it's going to flow to me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I could try to stress myself out even more and be worried about everything going on every single day, but mm -hmm. it sort of always just works out. And once again, there's a player I played with and, uh, you know, he always said everything always works out. And I sort of live by that now and everything that I, I do. And I'm very mm -hmm. grateful that he taught me that when, uh, when we were in school together. Mm -hmm. So an interesting point you brought up was that like, yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out, right? Like everything will happen exactly as you need it, right? Life's divine timing, however you want to frame it. What, what in you, from your lived experience, you know, was that something that you've always had, like that ability to sort of like trust that things are going to work out, you know, everything's going to sort of happen in, in due time? Or is that something where you had a great coach, I had a great mentor that sort of help you understand that simple idea it's funny I think uh obviously I had a couple of mentors and stuff as a player from my coaching staff that you know try to reinforce that with me but I think honestly it was my peers and my teammates and you know people that you've had on this call who I've played with uh -huh. and some other some very very good friends that you know reminded me at times that you know you don't need to control everything that the outcome will be the outcome and this was sort of how it came about my respect for the e plus r equals o was yeah. like man, I, I'm, I'm over worried about too much right now, not about the process, not about this. Mm. Thing. Everything does work out. And sometimes trusting that process to get there is the really the right thing to do, right? And what this has done from my business standpoint is give me the skill to delegate, right? Because when I first took over the business, I was way too hands-on. I, re I, I retreated back to my old ways of worrying about everything. And then slowly it was like, you know what? Hey, everything works out. I need to delegate to these guys. That's a true successful formula for any type of growth or being good at it. Mm. I love how you talked about like that trust, you know, sort of being able to delegate. Uh, same as you, you know, that is one thing I've had to learn in entrepreneurship. And, and it's funny, I understood that lesson when I was an athlete, when I was coach, like you have to believe in something bigger than yourself. You have to believe that your teammate is going to do their job, right? There's another one of those proverbial cliches in sport, but, but learning to, to trust more in, in the game of life is, is something that I think we sometimes lose sight of because we, we think that that simple idea is doesn't transfer to the game of life. Um, what are your thoughts? I'm curious on this one. You know, I, I've heard a number of people say trust is earned. It's not given where I always think that, no, you have to be able to give your trust to someone before they reciprocate. And it's not, we're not, it's not transactional, but just understand that when you are trusting a people, then people will naturally trust you back. It's just a sort of like a natural byproduct. I'm curious, what are your thoughts on that one? Yeah, like I, it's funny. Like I, I equate trust to time, to be honest, and time to build, but not a lot of time to lose. And, you know, mm -hmm. it's a constant communication between that person of you making sure they understand that you trust them, but mm -hmm. also that, you know, you're going to give them the tools that they need for them to actually be able to trust in you because you can communicate as much as you want, but if you're not communicating the proper way, they're still going to have doubts, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, over time between, you know, being accountable to that person, obviously, and having those, those, those great conversations, you put yourself in a situation where it, it, it's, it's invisible, the, the trust that you have, but it's there and you sense it. And then that's mm -hmm. when it truly becomes something special when you both know what's there and you keep working together and it builds and it builds and mm -hmm. there becomes a bit of an unbroken trust at some point that, you know, it's, it's always going to be there. But like I said, it's always building, but very, very fast to be gone. Uh, yeah. which you always got to be conscious of. I love that. And what you sort of, as you described that, you said you're always building. And what I had this vision of, it's like a bank account, right? It's like, it's like when you're in a relationship, there's, there's, it's like a bank account. And every time you follow through on what you say you're going to do, right. Or every time you keep your word, it's like you, you put a coin in the trust bank, but it's funny how you said it could take one, you know, maybe a, you know, one different decision. And all of a sudden, the, the, the trust account goes to zero and then you have to start building up those in investments and deposits again. Yep. Yeah. I like that actually. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm curious, what, what has it been like? So, you know, you stepped into this role, which I think is so cool. I remember when I saw the role and I thought, you know, and then, you know, you shared that you had gotten the opportunity. I thought, Oh, 
this is perfect for you, right? Because again, you're, you're, you're an athlete, you're a coach, but you also come from the world of business and entrepreneurship. So I thought you bring a unique lens. Uh, what has it been like? Because the last two years, two and a half years have been an interesting time to say at least for everyone in the game of life. What has it been like being able to be sort of in this process of planning events, delivering events, actually being able to sort of deliver on a product that, you know, athletes, parents, coaches can finally see and immerse themselves in. What has what that process been like? It's been a bit of a whirlwind, to be honest. It's been an unbelievable, you know, kickstart for the last 12 weeks. Um, I'm very lucky that I walked into a situation where there was great infrastructure around it to the events being ran. You know, uh, you know my, my, my boss, I believe, is the hardest working person I've ever met and outworks me every single day, which, which drives you as the employee to try to get close to matching that. Yeah. And alongside, you have a group of people that have sort of been around and been through these things and being able to rely on them was was beyond important for me and, and not being alone in any of this, right? Like, you know, the, the title might be event coordinator, but at the end of the day, there, there might be some logistical things that I assist in communicating, but it's not done just by me. It's done by everyone and all the back end work done leading up to that and done mm -hmm. every year prior to this, because there was someone in this role prior to me that had phenomenal setups already completed that I was able to sort of inherit and look at and, and make work for what I had going on. Mm -hmm. You know, what I heard from you is this idea that every strong and powerful leader is surrounded by other strong and powerful leaders. Okay. Um, what, uh, I, I'm curious, like, as we get back, right, to, to quote, unquote, this new norm, you know, what, what would you like to see happen? Because I feel like we're kind of, you know, we're coming out of this, you know, time to, this last two and a half years where I think there's sort of like this blank canvas. Like I think the people, and I, I know you as an entrepreneur, you coming from business understand that those who really thrive have the ability to, to grow, to change, to innovate, right. And adapt. I, I'm curious, what, what do you, what would you like to see happen moving forward so that, you know, we, we can continue to grow this beautiful game. Yeah. I mean, there, there's a couple of things. I mean, you know, the, the, First one I'll say, and this is the goal of any coach or anyone who's ever coached community or whatever, is find ways to generate revenue so that we can make things more affordable, but continue to professionalize things, which leads me to number two. And that's something that I think football can has done great in the last, you know, 10, 15 years and just continue to grow is professionalize the sport and make it in comparison to every other great sport in this country, similar to hockey and basketball and soccer that have some bigger platforms, right? I think right now we're, we're on that track. And, you know, I think the, the one thing that I've noticed to, to, you know, just this year right now is from a broadcast standpoint, what they've been able to do and give access to the athletes and access to parents that can't maybe travel to games to see high quality game play. That's super mm -hmm. important because without the exposure of the events and what's going on, there's no point in running them, right? This is an opportunity for them to represent their province. This is an opportunity for them to represent their country in cases and be picked as potentially an all-star team in Canada leading in uh, to our fall uh, our fall selections, right? And I think mm -hmm. their parents being able to see them that maybe can't travel there is important. You know, yeah. so I think continue to innovate, you know, find new revenue streams, but at the end of the day, carry out high, high quality professional events so that mm -hmm. this this game continues to grow is super important because you know we want to see this game on on TSN. Right. And we want to see at the lowest levels on TSN in comparison and matching to the CFL level, which you watched last night, you'll watch tonight and you'll watch Saturday. Yeah. I love that idea. You know, like doing things in a certain way, right? Like doing it in a certain way that that it, it is very professional, whether from, you know, how we deliver programming to athletes, whether in terms of coaching, education, awareness, development to whether it's just, you know, what what parents and, and stakeholders are able to see right online. Um, so I'm curious from yours, right? You talked about those revenue streams. I'm curious, like, is, is this, what do you see? I know we've had some great conversations. Is it simply a matter of, you know, aligning with certain businesses? Like, you know, where, where's that, where's that line for you? Like wh where's the next logical step, I guess is, is, is my question. Well, I think, you know, the, the exposure to the game is number one, right? And if you want to be nationally 
uh, recognized. You need to have access to it. And I know the, the, the goal and the vision of what's going forward is to have these games broadcast on TV. Every event mm-hmm. should have a, some sort of broadcasting standard, right? And the streaming right now is that access. And, you know, that is sort of the next step to bring in more exposure because exposure is going to bring people to want to watch the games live or more people out and all that continues to generate. And, you know, if that's our number one goal and our number one mission early on, right, everything else is going to fall into place because that's going to give opportunity for more sponsorship and everything outside of what we're doing from an event standpoint. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm curious, it's been interesting and, uh, Again, I know you're, you're, I'd be curious on your, you know, your perspective, you know, it's kind of interesting when you're working in the nonprofit world, which NSOs, PSOs are, but then you also have this ex- lived experience working in the private sector where, you know, uh, maybe it's a little bit easier to generate financial resources, financial capacity, you know, what, from your perspective, what is the way to bring those together? Because, you know, the nonprofit world, you know, there are certain limitations, there's budgets, but then you also have, I think, a, a day and age where the private sector is looking to invest in stuff that matters, right? They give back. Like, I think we have a, a generation now of young people, and I think my kids are seeing it, where they want to, when they spend their money, they invest their money, they want to see it's making a difference. Like, wh- where do you see, like, you know, how do we, how do we bring these two worlds together? I think, you know, painting the picture of the alignment of the sport everywhere is super important right away. And I think that's one thing that, you know, I've noticed instantly is, you know, between the NSOs and PSOs, there's alignment in the vision of the sport. And with mm-hmm. alignment, our, our, our reach is greater. Everyone's going to speak the same language. The vision is the same. The mission is the same. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and that's, the, that's the core principle to us being able to go out and represent is, you know, po- compiling the numbers of our participants across the country to represent what the NSO is, which is all the football being played, flag, tackle, female, male. It, it doesn't matter what type of football it is. They're representations of Canadian football. And that is that only can happen if the PSOs are aligned. And right now, I think there's more and more alignment than, than ever. And I think that, you know, the PSOs are doing a great job to work with one another to grow this game because everyone cares about the game at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. I love I love your word, your alignment word. I know when I spoke with Jim Mullen, the president of Football Canada, and there he talked about that was his word, right? Was the whole idea of alignment. So, you know, it's interesting because I think, you know, again, from my experience, you know, in the sports world, it's interesting because you do kind of get a lot of this alpha personalities, like those personalities that are used to, okay, there's an uncertain circumstance. The, the outcome is unknown. I want to take charge. But it's funny that we can sometimes get so focused on our way that we sometimes drown out, you know, other maybe, uh, let's say, more efficient, more effective ways of doing things. Um, What is the path forward in order to create alignment from your, again, from your perspective? What's the way to bring more PSOs working towards, you know, and helping the NSO drive its vision? It just, yeah, it comes back to what we talked about earlier is building that trust, which once again, stipulates back to our communication, right? And, mm-hmm. you know, I, every single day I'm trying to do better at communicating and be better at communicating as, as we all are. And, mm-hmm. you know, if we can create great communication from NSO to PSO, and PSO to PSO, we're going to build that trust, which once again, is that alignment and accountability that we're going to see continue to happen within our game. Right. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's any secret formats and everyone being on the same page. And, you know, if everyone is communicating and aligned in things, that sort of alpha mentality of take charge will, will still happen, but it'll happen all together going towards one direction. Mm-hmm. And, and what do you see as being the alignment when you get more people aligned and you still have those personalities, those, those, those strong and powerful leaders, and you're able to delegate, what, what do you see that could happen? Honestly, I, you know, my goal is for, you know, and once again, lofty goal is this to be recognized just as much of a sport as, as hockey, right? Yeah. You know, hockey is a powerful sport. It's powerful because it has powerful people in it. People have played the game and people who had a great vision and pushed that vision for so long, right? Mm-hmm. And I think football is no different. At the end of the day, we have to have that goal of being, being at par with that sport. And that requires that people that want the game and care so much about the game to be that, to have that vision and push towards it, right? The alignment piece happens. And then, you know, 
we let the uh, we let the people that uh, you know truly want to go all in and get every every ounce they have to get it there. They'll get a step closer and take a step there, and then hopefully the next people that step in, into those roles do the same thing and continue with the same vision. I love the word you're using the the vision piece and why it resonates with me so much is, you know, I think back to you see it, I know you talked about, you know, you're someone who believes in the power of the mind, like you first have to see it in here, in your mind, you have to create that clear vision, that clear picture, even if it's not in your physical reality, but then once it's up here, then that's going to inspire you to take that consistent and focused action filled with ebbs and flows, which will actually help manifest and create the vision to come yep. to be. Absolutely. Yeah. Focus being the clear thing, right? Focusing on what you're trying to accomplish, which mm -hmm. is grow the game, grow participation, opportunity to have a football in your hand and throw it to a friend and have that connection to it, whether you're a spectator down the road, a participant or a parent of someone that's going to play the game. And that is the path. Yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting, like, as you shared just before we hopped on, um, I it was quickly looking on social and I, and I looked and I saw this, uh, I saw this clip from Purple Shift, which I know, you know, Football Canada and Football Ontario, you know, we've been using, uh, you know, around its founder, Mike Alway, who plays for the Montreal Alouettes. And then he had this clip that was cut of our, our U18 team O athletes and what their measurables are. So it was really kind of cool. And you don't have to be a football person to understand it, but just seeing here we are from our NSO, you know, we're working all the way down through working with a current CFL player who's using his gifts and engineering to promote the PSO, which is going down all the way to the grassroots so that these young people can sort of build and, and build themselves and put their name out there so that they can hopefully, you know, if they decide they want to pursue football post-secondary, you know, they're sort of building that uh, visual resume, right? So that to me, I was like, that's so awesome. And that comes from that alignment. Yep, alignment and, and, you know, what Mike is doing is it's opportunity, right? You know, his mm -hmm. opportunity and what he wants is opportunity to be noticed, to have mm -hmm. an opportunity to play at the next level, which is what his vision is in this. And I loved what, I mean, he 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 showed us this this app at the uh, the AGM uh, mm -hmm. for Football Canada back in, uh, in June. And I was just blown away by, you know, as someone that was undersized, hey, man, this could show different attributes and put a ranking to something that maybe can't be seen in different parts of the field or, you know, show parity across province. And I, I'm blown away by what he's doing, to be honest. And it's going to be a game changer for our sport in this country, I think. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious, you know, you talked about, you know, this idea of change. So, you know, one of the things that I've come to learn, and I know you've experienced as well, is like, change isn't always easy, right? It's, and anyone can feel like, motivated to change, like for a day or two or a week, right? We've all been there, right? New Year's resolutions. What is it like and what advice would you offer someone that's maybe thinking about making a change in their life that is sort of creating this greater vision, but just not really sure where to start? Like, like what, what piece of advice would you offer them? You're going to fail and you got to accept that because there's going to be a point where you fail at something and that failure is going to be the driving force to make your next change mean more and you're going to push more towards it i was i was that kid i was that person that set the workout plans oh i'm going to wake up at 5 a.m every single day and do these things and you know at some point it would it would stop or it wouldn't happen anymore right and as i as i started growing up i started reason one setting you know manageable goals you know mm -hmm. lawfully dreams manageable goals but mm -hmm. at the at the end of the day you know you fail enough times and you don't like that feeling and you don't want to fail anymore the change will happen because you're going to do everything in your power to make sure it goes goes well Mm -hmm. I love that. Like, again, like embracing this idea of, of imperfection, that it's not good. It's going to be a rise. There's going to be twists, turns, left, rights and everything. Um, I'm, I'm curious, is there anything that you do in your mental process that if you perceive that you're, you know, in that moment where you've been knocked down, there's a quote unquote failure. Is there anything that you tell yourself to get back up so that you can respond and continue on your journey to greatness? Uh, honestly, for, for me, my, my, mind, my mindset, no matter what happens is, is fix it, correct it, or make, or make it better. Right. It's like, yeah. it, even if it ends up being successful, I do try to look at the negatives. And sometimes that's my biggest flaw, to be honest, is trying to pick things apart too much. And it's like, oh man, like we could have done this, this, and that. Well, it was already successful in that way. Right. And yeah, it's a bit of a mindset thing that, that I have, but 
also I think the mindset of the athlete because any athlete that gets to play at a high level or get to coach at a high level has that little bit of drive in them where, you know, they, they care more about the losses than the wins. Right. And if you sort of keep that close, close to your, your, your heart all the time, you're going to sort of have success in that path. I love what you're sharing. It just reminds me of one of my favorite quotes that, that Nelson Mandela quote, I never lose. I either win or I learn. Yeah, right? absolutely. Okay. So, so I'm curious again, I know you painted this beautiful picture. You talked about this vision that you, you see this vision the, of, you know, football being as big as any sport in the, in this country. And who knows, maybe, maybe, maybe Canada becomes the leader of it. That's the fun part of this life. Um, if, if anyone is intrigued, anyone's interested, anyone wants to be part of this vision, uh, is there anything they can do locally, provincially, nationally, just to get started so they can help drive the vision forward? There are so many things, but the things that come to my mind right now is be a coach and be a mentor and be an official. You know what? I think the most underrated person on a football field and in our industry are the officials. And I've learned that more at the NSO level than I ever did before. We don't have enough of them. We need more of them. We need more of them that care about the game. And without them, that the game doesn't exist, right? And people need to understand that. And I think there's a huge push right now, and we're working very hard to make sure everyone has the opportunity to get the training they have. And we have a great uh, manager of officiating who's one of the most communicative person I've ever met. He's, he's, he's awesome. Um, if, if you have any interest in officiating and growing this game, you mm -hmm. will have a huge impact going forward and have huge opportunity in the game going forward. You know, everyone's impact is, is always going to be slightly different, but I think anyone who chooses that path here going forward, they don't realize it yet, but in five years' time, it's going to be the reason the game was successful in anything, whether it was flag or tackle. Mm. I love that. Uh, I know that that's something we're working towards, too, at, at the provincial level. Uh, you know, it, it's interesting. I would Two things kind of came up as you said that. One, I thought, okay, let's say someone has no interest in officiating. You know, what can we do to help that? I think one, I think it's being mindful of how our athletes, how our coaches, how our parents, how our stakeholders, how they engage with officials. Yep. Right. I think that that's important to do because again, I think we all know that if we were going to our job or our work or our part-time job, you know, how would you want to be treated there? I think that that always reminds me, you know, when we're at sports to, to be, to be patient, and understanding with our officials. That's yep. one. Two, I think to what could we do to work with the education system, maybe specialties, high skills, majors to start to work, to develop it at the grassroots level so that we give, create more pathways for athletes once they're done sport. That's, that, that's one of my biggest goals right now is I want to make sure that there's an opportunity to learn to be an official while you're still playing university football. You know, I think one of the greatest, um, you know, one of the greatest opportunities we have to make an impact in this game right now is at the university level. And whether that is at the tackle level or right, going across the country at U sports or at the new collegiate flag level, which we've seen explode, mm -hmm. right? We have constant access to those athletes. It's one of the only streams in football where you have 12 months a year access to them. You know, giving them opportunities to learn to be officials or learn to be coaches to give back after is super important because once they're out, what is their next step? What is their pathway, right? Their shelf life is there. And when it mm -hmm. ends, if they haven't had the opportunity to experience the other, all right, are they going to naturally go out and find that on their own as they enter the, the, the real world of, of working in real life, right? Because you only got so much time in this. Yeah. Well, it's interesting as you share that, I just think back to take it from two guys that, you know, have been involved in sport, left sport for a little bit. There's something that it it's it's hard to find. It's not easy to find something that's as special as sports, the transformation of sports. So, you know, maybe take it from us. If, if you enjoy and you love and you're passionate about sports, stay in it, find opportunities to get involved because, yeah, you may miss it one day. <laughs> you will. You will miss it. There's, yeah, you will. You, you don't know when. It'll hit you. Yeah. Okay. So brother, I, I just want to take a moment to thank you. Uh, I want to take a moment just to thank you for, you know, the amazing man you are, teacher, you know, coach, mentor, but more importantly, the amazing human being you are. Um, I, I still think back to our first conversation in Kingston, how we just, you know, we, we I think we're talking about football, but then it was crazy when I think back to, you know, just start to go into like entrepreneurship, life, 
you know, next steps, dream. Like, yeah, I think we both started talking about like our dreams and visions for a, a, a brighter tomorrow. So I just want to thank you for, for again, always inspiring me and just, you know, being a shining light in my life, brother. So I really do appreciate you. No, I appreciate you a lot, JT. And like I said, uh, I got to start carrying around a microphone and recording our conversations because the world's problems will be solved. <laughs> I do love our conversations, absolutely. And uh, I think they do good in the long run. Yeah, for sure, brother. So folks, as I remind you every time in the huddle, knowledge is potential power. It's the consistent focus application of great knowledge that actually creates great results. So my challenge to you is to take one of these valuable nuggets of wisdom and go apply it to your life today. And as I remind you every time in the huddle, you are deserving of greatness. You are worthy of greatness. You are greatness. And what my only ask from these conversations is for you to do one thing. If it resonates with you, please share this conversation with a friend, a loved one, or just someone you feel that would benefit from, from hearing this amazing conversation today. Uh, as always, I love having these conversations and I look forward to hearing you chat with you next time in the huddle. Have a blessed rest of your day.